Welcome back to Patrick Boyle on Finance. So a few days ago, it was in the news that the whale that's recently appeared in the equity option space was not just the legendary Robin Hood traders from Reddit Wall Street bets, but also the Japanese tech investor SoftBank. News reports that SoftBank is making billions by using options to bet on technology stocks have stirred speculation that the Japanese conglomerate is a driving force behind the recent rally in individual tech stocks. In today's video, we're going to discuss how likely it is that the SoftBank trades pushed up these stock prices and how their trades differ in market impact from those of retail investors. According to the Financial Times, SoftBank is the Nasdaq whale in the equity derivative space, gobbling up billions of dollars of US equity options in a move that possibly stoked the rally in big tech stocks before their sharp pullback on Thursday. SoftBank has been snapping up call options in tech stocks during the past month in huge size, contributing to the largest trading volumes in contracts linked to individual companies in at least 10 years. Call options are financial contracts that give the option buyer the right but not the obligation to buy a stock, a bond or some other financial asset at a specified strike price within a specific time period. If the asset's price goes up above the strike price by expiration, the option owner will go ahead and exercise their option to purchase the stock. If the price is below the strike price, the option will expire worthless and the options buyer will have lost 100% of the money they spent on buying the option. If you want to learn more about options, I have a bunch of options videos. I have a playlist, in fact, called Introduction to Options that you can take a look at. The Financial Times reported on Sunday that the group's trading strategy meant that it was now sitting on gains of around $4 billion after the founder Masayoshi Son's aggressive bets on equity derivatives. SoftBank shares lost over 7% this morning, however, after this news came out, a fall that erased almost $9 billion from the company's market cap. So that's kind of interesting. They're up $4 billion, but they got sold off, and so the, the company fell by $9 billion in value. And that's really just down to the idea that maybe a lot of the investors in SoftBank are just nervous about the size of these positions and the risk associated with them. Now, the Nikkei in Index, in which SoftBank is, I think, the second largest component, dropped only around a half of a percent. So it's not that SoftBank is down because the market is down. In fact, SoftBank is kind of part of what's dragging the Nikkei down today. Um, before this morning's fall, though, SoftBank stock had climbed around 33% this year, and the stock price slide followed two days of declines on the NASDAQ, which they, of course, own all of these options in uh, at the end of last week. This aggressive move into the options market marks a new chapter for SoftBank, which in recent years has made huge bets on privately held technology startups through its $100 billion vision fund. And I think I even made a little video, one of my videos about Wirecard related to SoftBank's investment in Wirecard, which is actually quite interesting. But after the coronavirus market tumult hit those investments hard, the company established an asset management unit for public market investments using capital contributed by its founder, Masayoshi-san. Now it has also made a splash in trading derivatives linked to some of these new investments. The surge in purchases of call options has been the talk of Wall Street in recent weeks. Some people are claiming that the sheer volume of options trades brought about the recent melt-up in many of the big technology stocks over the summer. Shares in Tesla soared 26% in under a week to September 1st, while Amazon and Alphabet gained around 9% each. The Financial Times reports that the size of these SoftBank options trades has even been making some people within SoftBank's organization nervous. 
This options buying comes alongside $10 billion in public investments that SoftBank is targeting through its new asset management arm. According to a filing with the SEC last month, SoftBank has bought stakes of nearly $2 billion in Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, and Tesla, investments that are partially funded by cash from its $41 billion asset sale program that was triggered by a collapse in its share price during the COVID-19 market turmoil. SoftBank's huge derivatives bet has worked for now, leaving the Japanese group with a large but still unrealized profit. Uh, a continued pullback, obviously, in these stocks could erode these returns, so it's not all over yet. So how do these SoftBank trades differ from the retail options trades that we've also been reading about quite a bit recently? Well, OCC data shows that small trader accounts spent $40 billion of premium in call options over the last month. This is a huge increase in retail option activity. It's way above normal. Activity is heavily concentrated in very short-term call options with these retail trades, with only a week or two remaining till expiration. And of course, this has mostly been on the kind of hot technology momentum stocks. Short-term options have a lot of leverage and a lot of gamma when they are close to the money. And what this means is that a trader's exposure to the underlying ramps up as the price rises and evaporates as the price falls. So if the price of the underlying goes up, your delta, which is your exposure to sort of ownership of those shares, increases greatly when gamma is high. And equally, if the, if the stock falls in price, uh, you know, your exposure to it really evaporates. The options move to being close to worthless quite quickly. Now, the market maker who sells you that call, because of course, whenever someone buys a call, Option, they're buying it from someone else, and that's usually a market maker. And that person is going to hedge that exposure immediately. So they'll hedge their risk to the underlying stock right away. But then as the price rises, they'll be required to buy more of the underlying stock in order to remain hedged. And that's because you can't statically hedge an option. You have to dynamically hedge it. Heavy buying of short-term options therefore accelerates moves in trending stocks. It basically causes them to continue trending. And equally, if they reverse, it has the opposite effect. What this means is that a relatively small amount of options premium can drive a larger market price reinforcement mechanism in the underlying. If you want to learn more about how this mechanism works, watch my videos on dynamic hedging, and I'll probably link to them in the description. SoftBank's recent large trades are reported to be a few billion dollars in options premiums executed in the form of call spreads. And I have some videos on call spreads as well, or on option spreads in general, if you want to watch those. And um, these ones have three to six month maturity, so they're much longer term than the sort of retail options trades. I'm hearing from people in the market that these trades were mostly executed versus stock, which which means that SoftBank bought the call spreads and sold stock. So they do that as one transaction with the market maker that they deal with, executing a delta neutral trade. So these transactions themselves, you would not expect to have driven meaningful buying pressure on the stocks. If you want to learn more about option spreads, uh, do watch my video on that topic. Now, these trades are much longer dated than the retail trades being done by Robinhood traders. SoftBank's risk exposure is much more heavily weighted to volatility as opposed to gamma, with maybe a few hundred million dollars of gamma per 1% across the big tech names. This would be much too small to have a material impact on the stock's prices directly over a short period of time. So this is very different to the mechanism that you'll see with those short-term high gamma options that the retail customers are buying. 
In the recent tech stock rally, along with continued option buying, market makers' positions would be under pressure from their net vega risk limits, which would eventually force them to cover some of that risk in the market, possibly by buying similarly dated NASDAQ or S&P call options. So they'll hedge their exposure to these stocks with index options. Vega is a measurement of an option's price sensitivity to changes in the volatility of the underlying asset, and risk managers would usually limit the amount of Vega risk that an option's market maker is allowed to take. So if this gets too big, they're just forced to hedge their, their Vega exposure. Heavy demand for option-based protection around the US election, which I discussed in last Thursday's video, will have fed into this market dynamic and contributed to the much discussed stocks up, vol up behavior of the last few weeks, where the VIX, the volatility index, and especially the NASDAQ VIX was trending higher even as stocks continued to rally. And this is an unusual circumstance. Normally stocks rise is associated with VIX declines and vice versa. Despite some press articles, SoftBank's options trades alone are unlikely to have accounted for the melt-up in tech stocks in the last few weeks. Hopefully this video helps to explain some of what's been happening in the market recently. And if you want to learn more, you can check out my other videos on these topics on how options work. And you can also take a look at my book on financial derivatives that's linked to in the description below. Anyhow, talk to you soon. Bye.